Good morning and let's talk Super Rugby format. I'm Paul, the guy behind Driving More, and welcome to my chat. If you're watching on uh, Periscope, Twitter, please do put comments if you're watching live, um, or otherwise um, tweet me back and we can have a chat all about this. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, that's your hand symbol, so YouTube, wasn't it? if you're watching on YouTube, put comments below and we'll have a chat about this as well. So the Super Rugby format has been a big uh, topic um, recently and with a lot of things going on. So what happened? They came, they put the new, new format in last season. People weren't happy. Um, Super Rugby admitted there was no plan and there hadn't been a plan. And so they got in Accenture to do a 10-year plan for them from 2017 to 2027. Now, um, as, you'll, as you'll probably realise, there is no plan still and we're already into 2017. So clearly they haven't implemented it on schedule. What I think that shows is that what Accenture came back with was unpalatable to at least some of the stakeholders, uh, and that's essentially around redu reduction of teams. And I think we've seen a lot of that being leaked in the press, uh, and it has looked like an all right mess. Now, rather than dealing with it up front, what Super Rugby decided to do was to kick the can down the road and say, hey, let's make a decision next year. So they got back together again this year and they went, hey, let's make a decision later and kick the can even further down the road, leading to more uh, and more uh, speculation, rumours and other things that just generally bring the game into disrepute and make it look bad. Now, with everybody bagging the current format, the last thing in the world Super Rugby needs is weak leadership that isn't really going anywhere. What it needs is strong leadership to say, this is what we're going to do, and here we go, we're off. Um, personally, uh, whilst I think there are problems with the current format, um, I don't think it is as intrinsically bad as a lot of people are suggesting. And I'll come on to how I think it should grow over the next few years. One thing you will also notice is that we've stopped talking about a 10-year plan. All we're talking about now is what should Super Rugby look like next season? Um, and that's another massive failing. If we don't get out of this a 10-year plan, a vision as to what Super Rugby should eventually be, then, um, then this has failed and we're back to square one, back to where we were two, three years ago, which is just um, bumbling along and going, hey, let's try and do some expansion because that's kind of a cool idea, but we've got no, we don't know where we're going. So um, whilst it looks like their reduction and and being short-sighted again, what I think Super Rugby need, really needs to decide is, what is it going to be? Is it going to be a essentially a global or non-European, potentially, um, conference-based competition, club competition? Or um, is it going to be um, a heartlands of rugby competition um, and let other areas create their own competitions separately? Because at the moment, it's between two places. A lot of people are suggesting let's get rid of an Australian or a South African team um, to get us back down to sort of towards 15 teams. Um, and then what we have is a mixture of a global, a global competition that isn't really global because we've got Japan and Argentina in there um, and a kind of a heartlands competition, but it isn't a heartlands because we've got these really long journeys um, to, to places. So I think it needs to decide which way it wants to go. Personally, um, I think we should be looking at a global conference club competition as being the end goal for Super Rugby. And that's where it should be trying to get to in 10 years time. What does that need? Well, if we look at some of the, um, what does that mean? Um, so for me, Argentina can't run a national team of one Super Rugby franchise. They need to be looking at having at least two. Um, you, you need more than one, one, one club feeding into an international team. So they need to be looking and thinking about expansion, not contraction. The same applies to Japan. As well, they need to be thinking about expansion, not contraction, um, and that's so. That's the, the way I think we should be looking. I think we should be looking at an America's conference or two, uh, an Asian conference, um, a South Africa conference, uh, um, Australia and New Zealand as a basis, with maybe the option of also having a European conference if Pro 12 uh, wants to merge in, uh, which is another option. So the America's conference, what would that look like? Um, a couple of teams in Argentina and obviously the USA um, and Canada uh, creating a conference. 
Now again, USA and Canada would need to expand beyond one team again if they're looking at using that as a foundation for their international team. Um, the Asian Conference, well obviously Japan needs a couple of teams. Um, they're obviously playing games in Singapore, so Singapore would, uh, would be a good place for a team. The Pacific Islands could then join that conference as well using the economy of the, um, the sales of the TV into Japan as a way of helping to fund that. Um, and also if Hong Kong have recently uh, gone um, fully professional with their national team as well. So there's room for a team there, um, which obviously is the gateway to China eventually. And obviously in China, we've got, uh, we've had all that talk of the $100 million over 10 years um, investment into expanding rugby in China. So maybe in 10 years time, uh, they will be ready or be starting to be ready um, to start about thinking about joining in some form of competition. Uh, I've got to remember that um, just very quickly from a tangent there, that um, 100 million over 10 years is 10 million a year um, in US dollars. That's the kind of same as a single B Premiership salary cap, um, so or less than that. So it's really isn't, and if you're talking about a billion people, that's not a lot of money. Uh, so I know that people think that there's a lot of money, but 100 million over 10 years is not all the money for expanding rugby into China. So um, then obviously you need the, um, then you have the South Africa conference and the New Zealand and Australian conference. Now, one of the things that we then do to try and reduce the travel, because travel is one of the killers for this, is you play home and away in your own conference. And also maybe look at going down the lines of the way that things like the NFL, which obviously this is all, all um, using as the format here for this, they're copying, is the NFL, you have two sides, the AFC and the NFC, and they play together to produce two title contenders. Um, so look at also splitting uh, the conferences into an, a, a, an east and a west, um, potentially so that people don't have to fly through quite as many time zones, um, and put something like South Africa and the Americas into one half, and put Australia, New Zealand, and Asia into the other half. With and then you play mainly within your own half um, to create one champion to take on the other side. If Europe came in, obviously Europe could join in with South Africa and Americas, and those time zones would fit much better. And that would get on the player welfare and the travel side of things would be much easier. It would also be much better on the media side of things because the TV will be able to show locally relevant games at a time that the people could actually watch. So whilst I see everyone else is talking about Super Rugby contracting, going back to Super 15s or even Super 12s uh, with some resistance good glasses, I think for the Super 12s one, uh, I think that Super Rugby needs to be looking in the other direction. Uh, and look at how it expands, but to say and to say right, the template for ten years time is this, and then figuring out how they get there. Um, at the moment, all we're thinking about is what are we going to do next year, not how we're going to get to somewhere in the future. Um, one of the reasons I think that contraction is going to be a bad idea um, is that New Zealand, in particular, but also Australia, um, because of the of the ranking of the sport. Um, their marketplaces are not big enough to create the, 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 the generate the income that the clubs and the sides need. They need to expand into bigger markets uh, and get a bigger footprint in Japan, um, potentially also in South in Korea, uh, in the Americas, where they can generate a lot more money um, from media rights and other things. So um, if you have liked this and you're watching on Twitter, please do share. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, give it the old um, thumbs up. Um, do sign up for my newsletter so you don't miss any of my videos or content. Um, that's The link is in the title above on Twitter or it's in the notes below on YouTube. Thank you very much for, lots, for, for watching. Um, do let me know your thoughts, uh, Twitter or comments. Um, I'm very happy to have a discussion and chat about um, the future format of um, Super Rugby.